When I started at my new school, I didn't talk much on the first day. Even though I knew enough English to get by, my old school didn't really prepare me to use English every day. I felt very lonely, especially since I joined in the middle of the semester and everyone else already had their friends. I was so anxious that I couldn't bring myself to eat in the cafeteria for the first few months. Instead, I ate alone in the washroom. It's hard to believe now, but that's how it was. After a while, I began to form a friendship, starting with fellow quiet students from Japan who shared my love for anime and drawing. These first friends helped me branch out, introducing me to a diverse group of students from various countries. It felt like a natural unfolding of connection similar to the game mechanic in Persona 3. In the game, befriending Cass is a stepping stone to meeting Yuko. And if you're too scared to ask Yugo to walk home together, you miss out not only on deepening that relationship, but also on the opportunity to meet Mutasu of the Tower Akana. This progression of friendships show me how important it is to take that first step, as its connection can lead to unexpected and enriching encounters. Oh, hello. What's up? No, I'm in a hurry today. See ya. Around this time, I also started to be really scared of tying. I couldn't stop thinking about it, and it made me not want to do anything. I didn't understand why I was so scared all of a sudden. The story of Persona 3 is a lot about dealing with death and what it means to be mortal. It might seem scary to think about death, but the game makes you wonder if you're really afraid of dying or just scared of losing what we have. Like our friends, and experiences. Before I had close friends, I wasn't that scared of dying because I didn't feel like I had much to lose. But after making meaningful connections, the thought of not being able to make new memories with them became my biggest fear. Persona 3 showed this through its characters like Shidori, who doesn't fear death until she falls in love with Junpei. Their love makes her want to live because she doesn't want to lose their connection. What do you mean? Why do you look so scared? Death is nothing to be afraid of. What are you talking about? Dying just means you won't wake up tomorrow. That's all. Junpei, who is trying to find his purpose, see his life change because of Shidori. When she sacrifices her life for him, it highlights how our relationships give our lives meanings, even when we face death. So, Persona 3 isn't just about death, it's about how our relationships and experiences shape how we see life and death. It teaches us that our fear of dying often comes from not wanting to lose the connection that make life worth living. What I realize now, dying means I won't see you anymore. As I started to understand my fear, I realized Persona 3's story was still a mystery to me. It felt like for every answer I found, the game hinted at even more secret hiding in the shadow, inviting me to dive deeper and find out more. Persona 3 really digs into how we go through big changes in life. It's like the game is all about these big ships that everyone has to face. You know how some people think the death card in Tarot means someone going to die? Well, it's actually about change and moving on to something new. Persona 3 is full of story like this. Take Bebe for example, he doesn't want to leave, but he had to go back to his country. Or Michael, struggling with her parents' breakup, learning to accept it and understand that it's the start of something new for her. The game shows us that change isn't just about endings, it's about all the stuff we go through, friendships changing, moments passing, and even the way we see the world around us. I have lived through this too, and I'm sure all of you did. When high school ended, I had to say goodbye to a lot of my friends, including a close one from Japan. We tried to keep in touch, but over time, we just stopped talking. But that wasn't the end of everything. In college, I made a bunch of new friends and had one of the best time in my life. It showed me that it's okay to move on because new doors open and there are always new chances to grow and meet people. So just like in Persona 3, life is all about navigating changes. And here's the thing, Every new beginnings come from some other beginnings ends. Life throws a bunch of starts and stop at us, kind of preparing us for the biggest change of all, death. With every friendship that drifts apart, or every chapter that closes, we lose a bit, sure, but we also keep something precious from it. Yet, this final change is the scariest, because we are stepping into the unknowns. We don't know how much we'll lose, and it could be everything. 
but that's the journey of life, filled with countless beginnings and endings, each teaching us, preparing us for whatever to come next. The ending of Persona 3 hits you right in the feels, not only because of the emotional scene on the rooftop, but also thanks to the mundane moments leading up to it. As you wander around the school, talking to your friends, making promises to cash up against, once the next school year starts. We also have Kenji's talking about how some teachers are leaving and some new ones are coming in to replace them. He also mentioned that his little sister will be starting high school at Gekokan High, showing how while the school mostly remains the same, its residents change as the time passes. The transformation of the game start menus from nighttime classroom scene fill the silhouettes of the companions to a morning scene devoid of figures post-completion also symbolize this cycle. The morning light and the empty armband serve as a reminder that while individuals move on, the memories and impacts of their life persist as evidence of their existence. This subtle yet powerful change in the game interface serves as a final nod to the theme of change, transition, and the enduring nature of memories, encapsulating the essence of Persona 3 narrative. Life is a series of interconnected moments and changes, and it's in the memories we created within these moments that define our existence. In the original game, this build-up led to a memorable moment where everyone rushes to the rooftop, remembering their promises to meet up with the protagonist and Aegis. The camera then focused on Aegis's face, showing her smile as everyone keeps their promise to show up as the protagonist passes away on her lap. In Reload, there was an added scene showing the protagonist peacefully passing away with a smile on his face. Back then, I couldn't fully wrap my head around why those smiles at the rooftop scene meant so much, but thinking about it now, there's this sense that those smiles weren't just about friends showing up, they were about something bigger, like the bond we make and how we come to term with the ends. It's like those smiles were hinting at the deeper understanding of life final moments, a meaning that I'm just starting to see. The reason why this scene is so beautiful yet so sad is due to the multiple reason. The moment that you realize you are about to die, it hurts you that you won't be able to fulfill those promises to make new memories with all the friends you just promised. As tears are streaming down Ike's face, you then give an option to comfort her, telling her it's going to be okay. And while the entire game teaches us about accepting one mortality, at the final moments, it gives us the option to close our eyes or to not do it. And while I understand the message, I am not hesitating to not close my eyes. But it didn't matter, showing the game stay true to its message. A lone blue butterfly is then shown as a symbol of our death, which means that we did not see our friends arrive on the rooftop and keep their promise. So then, why did we smile? In the original, okay? we did not get to see the main character smile, right but it was Aegis who did. As why we were not able to anymore, Aegis, who is now carrying the understanding and memories of how important this promise was to us, is smiling in our place. But in Reloads, apart from Aegis smiling, we also smile, showing the trust and bond we have in our friends that they will keep their promise. And it is then that I realized that, while we may not have control over life beginnings or endings, we possess the power to shape the journey in betweens. And that is the message behind that smile. It's encouraged embracing every moment with those we care about. Understanding that while endings are inevitable, we can face it with a smile by living a fulfilling life. <laughs>